On this episode of China Uncensored, sure, the Chinese Communist Party is trying to steal American innovation at every turn. But that doesn't mean we can't take their money, right? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Made in China, a symbol of quality workmanship and cutting edge technology. At least, that's what Chinese leader Xi Jinping wants you to think. In 2015, Xi Jinping announced a new economic model called Made in China 2025. It's focused on the task of upgrading and accelerating technological development. On this show, we've talked about several ways the Communist Party has uh, accelerated technological development in the past, like by hacking and stealing U.S. intellectual property, then reverse engineering it at Chinese technology transfer centers. So much faster and easier than starting from scratch. China has also weaponized trade, according to Republican Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn. In many instances, China has simply used trade as a weapon, coercing U.S. companies to enter into joint ventures and other business agreements that require the company to hand over key technology and know-how, the so-called secret sauce. And I always thought secret sauce was mayonnaise plus high fructose corn syrup left out in the sun for three days. Today, we'll be talking about a third way the Chinese Communist Party acquires American tech. They simply buy the American tech companies. Part of Xi Jinping's Made in China 2025 plan is encouraging Chinese companies to invest in foreign tech companies. In particular, high-tech industries like artificial intelligence, robotics, and space travel. You know, your basic Isaac Asimov novel. I guess she must be a fan. The amount of money China has pumped into U.S. tech skyrocketed after Made in China 2025 was announced. Deals with Chinese investors jumped from 66 in 2013 to 165 in 2017. Chinese companies have invested in everything from Uber to Airbnb to even Grindr. I think the Chinese government might be getting a little more data than they bargained for with Grindr. Okay, Grindr jokes aside, in some cases, Chinese businesses are investing in tech companies that are developing technology critical to national defense or infrastructure, or that possesses a lot of data on Americans. The Pentagon considers all this investment, not just Grindr, a serious risk for the United States. This report from last year warns that the Chinese Communist Party is stealing the crown jewels of U.S. innovation. Yes, those are the jewels everyone on Grindr is suddenly worried about. China's venture capital investment is at an all-time high. And according to the Pentagon's report, the U.S. government isn't doing enough to address the risk. The threat is so serious that both President Obama and President Trump agree on it. And I thought they didn't agree on anything. In December 2016, Obama stopped a Chinese takeover of the U.S. subsidiary of a German semiconductor manufacturer. The semiconductor industry makes the microchips that are the core of any advanced technology the Chinese Communist Party would like to get their hands on. Obama blocking that takeover helped curb the amount of Chinese money going into U.S. tech. But Chinese companies potentially buying sensitive U.S. technology was still a problem. In September 2017, Trump blocked a Chinese purchase of Lattice, another U.S. semiconductor maker. And earlier this year, Trump blocked the sale of yet another U.S. chip maker because of Chinese security issues. Obama and Trump weren't doing this on their own, though. Although they blocked these deals using executive orders, they did it on the recommendation of the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, or CFIUS. CFIUS is a committee that involves several top-level U.S. government agencies, and it's chaired by the Treasury Secretary. It was founded in 1975 to oversee purchases of critical U.S. industries by foreign countries. But the CFIUS committee hardly ever met, until after 9-11. Then Congress passed new legislation that increased the role of CFIUS. And according to Politico, CFIUS did not have the resources to keep pace. One official described 80-hour work weeks with no time off. CFIUS carries so much weight that just their recommendation against a deal is often enough to make it fall apart without even getting the president involved. At the beginning of this year, 
Cepheus rejected a planned Chinese takeover of MoneyGram because of national security concerns. A month later, Cepheus rejected a state-backed Chinese company's acquisition of another U.S. chipmaker. But an overworked Cepheus can't catch everything. Here's an example. Last year, a semiconductor maker, Atop Tech, filed for bankruptcy. But it had a market share of $1 billion because of a groundbreaking product, an automated designer capable of making microchips that could power anything from smartphones to high-tech weapons systems. So, a company called Avatar Integrated Systems swooped in and bought it. Now, no one in the semiconductor industry had ever heard of them. Turns out, it belonged to a big shot in China's steel industry, and it looked like he set up Avatar for the sole purpose of buying a top tech. At the time, others in the semiconductor industry and even a Pentagon official had warned the bankruptcy court that letting Avatar buy a top tech was a bad idea. But the deal went through anyway, because the whole thing flew under the radar of Cepheus. Last year, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis warned that Cepheus is both outdated and overburdened and needed to be updated. The Trump administration said modernizing Cepheus would strengthen our ability to protect national security and enhance confidence in our long-standing open investment policy. There are two bipartisan bills going through Congress that aim to strengthen Cepheus. They want to do things like expand the types of transactions Cepheus would look at, including bankruptcy cases like Atop Tech. But there are some serious challenges to Cepheus even if one of these bills passes. See, it's not as simple as just blocking a Chinese state-owned enterprise from purchasing, say, American Secret Sauce, Inc. What about a Chinese national who becomes a New Zealand citizen, but gets his money from the Communist Party and wants to buy an American business? What about a Mexican company whose stock is partly owned by a Chinese conglomerate and that Mexican company wants to buy an American business? What about a local Chinese businessman in the United States who's a U.S. citizen, but the Communist Party is funneling money to him through a relative? Things start to get very murky, and you have to deal with some unpleasant things that the Communist Party would love to exploit, like the idea that stopping Chinese investment is motivated by racism. Then there's the counter-argument by those who want to see more Chinese investment. An IBM policy executive said in a January congressional hearing that the new bill could constitute the most economically harmful imposition of unilateral trade restrictions by the United States in many decades. I mean, sure, China is run by an authoritarian regime with a national plan to systematically steal Western technology. But they've got a lot of money and we want it. Why be such a negative Nancy? And it's that kind of broad-minded policy vision that led IBM to sell punch card technology to the Nazis, enabling them to calculate exactly how many Jews should be emptied out of the ghettos each day and onto trains to you know where. A similar argument is made overall in Silicon Valley, that Chinese investment money is a good thing and fuels innovation. I get it. It seems like it's a free country. Why not take the money? It doesn't matter who it comes from. And that fits in just fine with the Chinese Communist Party's plan for Made in China 2025. So what do you think about Chinese investment in U.S. tech? Leave your comments below. And before you go, it's that time when we answer a question from a supporter of the show, a member of our China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. This question comes from Jonathan Swanberg. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jonathan. What is the real cost of stolen intellectual property, IP, from the U.S. to China? Great question. The answer depends on who you ask. The Intellectual Property Commission says IP theft costs the U.S. economy $600 billion a year, largely from China. But it might be much bigger than that. Fortune 500 technology consultant Casey Fleming says the actual cost is closer to $5 trillion dollars a year. And that's because, A, you have to factor in the total future value, not just products sold, but also the loss of future innovation and American jobs. And B, 
a lot of big companies that get hacked <laughs> don't report it publicly because it's too embarrassing and could make stock prices drop. It's quite likely that the Chinese military has hacked just about every big American corporation. It just doesn't get publicized. And that's all for this episode of China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. On the one hand, I'd love to take millions of dollars from some mysterious company in China. On the other hand, that might slightly affect the integrity of China Uncensored. That's why we're funded by direct support from viewers like you, members of our 50 Cent Army, who contribute a dollar or more per episode. Click this orange button to visit our Patreon page and become a supporter.